Thanks for joining us again. We're going to go straight into the special tests uh, for the shoulder. So the first special tests that we're going to go over are going to be tests for the rotator cuff muscle uh, as well as for the biceps tendon. The first test I'm going to go over is going to be the empty can test. This is very similar to the strength testing for the rotator cuff muscles, and you'll see a lot of overlap between the strength testing for rotator cuff muscles and the special test for them. So what I'm going to run my patient through is I'm going to have her go into to abduction to about 90 degrees, and in scaption, as we explained in our last video, we explained exactly what that scaption means. The patient's going to be for a little bit forward flex, and her arm's going to be in line with her scapula. And then I'm going to have her resist me as I apply a downward pressure. So go ahead and come up. I'm going to have you hold your hands here. And I'm going to apply a downward pressure and resist me. Excellent. Good. Go ahead and relax. So what I just had my patient do is the empty can test. Now a positive test would be a patient who, when they're up in their abduction and I'm applying that downward pressure, they end up having a lot of pain or they end up having a lot of weakness. And that makes me think that there might be something going on with their supraspinatus tendon or their infraspinatus tendon. Next, we're going to go into a few other examinations for the rotator cuff. One of the tests that we like to use to evaluate the rotator cuff is the drop arm test, and it's a very easy test. You can go straight into this from the last test that we just went over, which is the empty can test. So what I'll do is I can bring my patient up passively into a little bit of abduction, and I'll see if my patient's able to hold her arm up. Now, as you can see, our patient's arm immediately fell. She was unable to uh, be able to apply that force and apply that strength to keep that arm up, which is concerning for a rotator cuff tear. The next test I'm going to go over are external lag tests uh, for the shoulder and for the rotator cuff. Now, I'm going to position my patient in about 90 degrees of abduction, and I'm going to bring her elbow to about 90 degrees and externally rotate her. I'm going to bring her back into a little bit more external rotation, and then I'm going to let go, and I'm going to see if she's able to maintain that external rotation. And so my patient has a negative external lag test here. If it were a positive test, her arm would end up falling a little bit more into internal rotation because that muscle, that tendon of the rotator cuff uh, complex would not be intact to keep her into that external rotation. So if we're falling into internal rotation or if that arm is falling down to our side, we're concerned about a tear of the rotator cuff muscles or significant tendinopathy of the rotator cuff. Another version of this would be going into external rotation without going into abduction. So I can passively externally rotate my patient and typically I will compare to her contralateral side and I will let go and I will see if my patient is able to maintain that external rotation or if it's a positive test is she going to fall into a little bit of internal rotation? Now you can compare this to the contralateral side as well, but for demonstration purposes, I'm just using her one side. All right, we're gonna go straight into some of the special tests for our biceps tendon. In particular, we're looking at the long head of the biceps tendon with these special tests. The two that we're gonna talk about and we're going to demonstrate are going to be Speed's test and Jurgensen's test. So we're gonna start with Speed's test. I'm going to have my patient go into full forward flexion right here, stop at about 90 degrees with an open palm. I'm going to apply a downward force here and my patient is going to resist me. What I'm looking for here is pain and in particular pain right along the area of that biceps tendon in its bicipital groove. So go ahead and relax. Next test we're going to go over is Jurgensen's test. Now I'm going to show you one way to do this with a variation on it. Jurgensen's test is a test where the examiner is going to resist the patient while the patient is trying to supinate. So we're going to demonstrate. I'm going to have my patient at 90 degrees at her elbow and I'm going to pretend like I'm shaking her hand right here. I'm going to have her supinate almost as if she's doing a biceps curl and I'm going to resist her. So go ahead and try to supinate. Good and I'm resisting her at this point. What you're looking for is you're looking for pain right along that biceps tendon. Now there's a variant to this where I'm gonna have my patient resist me, so she's gonna to try to supinate again, and I'm going to externally rotate her while I'm doing this. What I'm feeling for is not only whether or not the patient has pain at the long head of the biceps, but I'm also looking to see if she's having any subluxation of that tendon outside of that bicipital groove. That can also cause a patient a lot of pain in this anterior aspect of their shoulder.